guys, it's Julen. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my home here in Santa Monica, California. So I am going to be doing a fun project today. My grandma and I did something similar like this a year ago, reupholstering my vintage table dining chair set. And I really love that project, reupholstering it fitting to my aesthetic. And I wanted to go ahead and do a similar project in today's video, focusing on my wicker chair. They're vintage and they're amazing. But again, I don't like the material. So we're gonna be reupholstering it and making it fit my aesthetic i love this set and it's featured in my patio space which i will be doing an updated patio tour once this chairs are reupholstered so it's a beautiful day here in santa monica in the 80s and i figure why not let's go ahead and knock this project out before i head back to las vegas this weekend so my grandma's here she has her sewing machine which we brought down from las vegas and we're gonna go ahead and do everything so i'm gonna be sharing with you guys how we go ahead and do the reupholstering now we're gonna keep the original material and then we're just gonna go over it and my grandma just created a pattern from scratch to go ahead and fit right over the original cushions and i love this method because it's less drama as far as for taking the old covers off and putting new ones just like so my dining table chairs we did the same thing where we took one original layer off and then we didn't know that there was another one so we just kept that on and then just went over that so I think that's just the best method when you're reupholstering vintage pieces and we're gonna do it today so let me know down in the comments below if you guys enjoy watching these DIY projects because I'm a DIYer and pretty much for the most part a bunch of my few pieces in my patio space has been like redone a lot of my pieces that I do get thrifted I do a lot of DIY projects over it uh, to kind of make it fit my aesthetic and my taste in my living space so I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'm gonna go ahead and share with you what the chair looks like before we get started so this is what the chair looks like so as you can see it just has really old not my style type of material this set is an amazing condition but then again I need to have this fit in my patio space with the theme of my aesthetic my grandma has a sewing machine set up but before I go ahead and bring these cushions in I want to show you what it currently looks like so here is what the chair looks like so it's a nice wide and deep wicker chair which I absolutely love because it's great for lounging in the patio and then it has what it has one square cushion here and then another fluffy back cushion here. So let's go ahead and take it inside where my grandma is ready to do her magic. Hey grandma, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being today's special guest. And thank you for being a big part of today's project. So anything that has to do with sewing, I pretty much get my inspiration from my grandma. Everything that I do personally is hand sewn as far as for like my belly dance costume. But my grandma is amazing on the sewing machine. And do you want to share with everybody how long have you been sewing? 30 years. So my grandma has a lot of experience and anytime I have like these projects, it challenges her to get creative and just kind of gets her outside of the box. So this particular piece that we're working on today doesn't have a pattern. And anytime you're reupholstering an old furniture or vintage set or just something in general that you don't like and it's thrifted, you can go ahead and switch it up to make it to your aesthetic. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how uh, we figured it out and set it up to have it fit my aesthetic. So this is the material that we got and I absolutely love this material. So I found this from um, one fabric store. It was our first fabric store that we went to in our last trip in Las Vegas. And uh, there wasn't much selection. There was probably like a small little bin and with a few reupholstering um, materials to choose from. And this was in the bin. And apparently yeah, also on sale so it came out to be maybe under sixty dollars for everything and i don't know how it ended up to be but whatever we needed was whatever that was left and so we just bought everything out not now, knowing the measurements no no we didn't <laughs> and we just kind of eyeballed it so my grandma was saying how much did we need like four, four and a half four and a half yards and then it was kind of in that range so we just bought it all out now originally i was wanting a tiffany blue with white monstera leaf print although we are not in hawaii so it's very hard to find things in the monstera print but guys this is tiffany blue with a floral and leaf print so that can't beat that it's it's a similar it's very similar um and again it's my theme with the tiffany blue even if it's not monstera guys i still love it it has like the nature theme with the leaves and the flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and have my grandma explain to you how she figured out the pattern. So we got four yard and a 
four yards and a half, I think. Okay. And what I did when I look at the cushions, I placed them on the material. So I said, okay, if I sew it this way, then I have to cut it to measure the fullness around. But then on the other hand, if I wanted to cover this one, see this is straight up and this would be straight down. So I would have to cut it to make it look both sides up. This one here, because it's facing up, and this is facing down. You're talking out, about the print. The print. So yes. I have to cut it off. Cut it. Cut it to make it both going in the same, same direction, direction, front yes. and back. So my grandma just kind of eyeballed it, where she measured around the pillow here, uh, so that she can get a guesstimate of how much material she needs for one cushion. And then now she's cutting it in half so that the print will be both facing, both. facing in the same direction. So this, you're going to have to turn it around. And, and then face it the other face way. Face it this way. So, so you'll be working with the same the direction of, of print. Print, yeah. Otherwise, one would be down and one would be up. So, so just note to self, guys, if you are getting yeah. a material with a print, make sure that you go ahead and cut it in half so that you can go ahead and flip the other side to match it the same direction. Always make sure the grain runs long way. That way, you know, your material will stretch with you when you try to put it on. So now, now that, that I got that, it, so mm -hmm. now I am going to put it in half. Okay. And because the top here is round, mm -hmm. so I already got it. So. so as you can see, guys, it's round. It's a little bit bigger on the top, smaller in the bottom. So this is the back cushion. Yeah. Which makes things just even more tricky. It's not so, a perfect square or circle. So the first one that I did, this is the amount that I need to cut off. So that's the pattern there. So my grandma is creating a round corner because, for the top. Yeah. So that it's tapered to fit around the round top edges here. So now it's gone. So we have two pieces. So when we put it against here, it would really work around. So as you can see, now it's rounded on the top. So there's no corner here. Yeah. So it looks like this. Okay. So round corners on the top and then you're just gonna let the bottoms be. So now what we have to do is turn it around. Okay. This is fast. It took me less than half an hour to sew both bottom and top. I had to kind of left because I almost was gonna sew one up, one down, and I said, oh gosh, we can't have that. So, here we go. So, she's referring to the other set that she did. So, she wanted to try one set first off camera <laughs> um, so that she doesn't goof up yeah. for our, our uh, filmed version here. So, one set is halfway done, not fully done. No, it says handwork now. Okay, yeah. so the cushions are on on one chair, uh, just yes. so that she could get practice, um, since this is all based off of winging it. <laughs> and then uh, this is the second set, so she's already done one, and um, she's going to be working on the second one. So she kind of figured out what she needed to do uh, when she did the first set. And it's set. fast. I mean, even a learner, beginner can. You know, okay, so this is the sewing machine that we're using. Can you talk yeah. about the brand? and? It's just... a Brother, and Brother is almost similar to Singer's, but Singer has more features, but still, it's a sewing machine that can do the work. Okay, so can you talk about the thread that we're using and the setting that you're on? I use cotton because we have cotton material, so that's cotton thread. And then, of course, you focus on the stitches, which... I'm going to go on the six to make it small stitch because you you want to make sure that it doesn't open up. Open up. So okay. you can either zigzag the edges okay. and you know, you know that it's not going to get pulled apart. So now I'm doing this as a five eight um, as you sew so that you have 
extra to play Here. with. Well, that that's a tension. Okay. Which is normally around three. Okay. And then on your button here for your stitches, you would like, I went on a six because I wanted a small stitch. Okay, thread it. Thread it and I uh, put your needle through and give a small, then go back so that it doesn't open on you. So now, just go for holy. So how much space are you giving for that edge? Five eighths. On both sides, you just have an enough. Okay. Because the width. I, I gave the six eighths. You'll have perfect and not have extras hanging. Okay, so now we're working on the edges here. Let's go ahead and see if the cushion will fit. I'm creating like a pillow slip over it. And we wanted to do it this way versus taking off the old because material because this already will keep its shape and it's yes. easier to work with. Normally they do have a lining under, but this didn't have, so the cotton is all crazy. So it's best to just keep it this way. Now, talk about these corners, Grandma, and how are you going to shape them? Now that my grandma has it in the corners, now she's creating her corner here. So how are you creating the corner, Grandma? By making pleats here, like how the inside one has made. So I'm just following So one. like lapping it over yeah, here. there. So that's what I did. So this is what the corner looks like here. As you can see, there's a nice pleat here. And then she's going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. So tell me, tell me how you make a pleat for people who don't know how to make pleats. Um, it all depends on the... On the the material, material and the how corner. much pieces there you know that you're working with normally can be one fourth can be up to a half inch all depend how much extra material how much space you have here that is to be left over each other so you're creating two if there's a corner here you're creating two folds it's almost like wrapping a present yeah so same way like how you wrap a present or if you're wrapping a box to mail out, um, you're creating a pleat. So this is just doing the same thing but with the cushions yeah. and the material. Okay. So there is another completed pleat right here. So this is what it would look like. For the second half of the piece that I cut. Which is the bottom part of the cushion. Which is the bottom part. It is, it's a whole piece, a 60. But because it's for the bottom. What I is this? Big square. Yeah. So you just, it's simple, so simple. And you put just put this together and sew it down. Now my grandma challenged me to sew this one, but I told her no. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> I don't want to jeopardize our only material that we have. So Julian won't be doing any sewing today. I'm here moral support for my grandma. And um, once she's done with this particular cushion, then we can go ahead and close up all four cushions because my grandma didn't uh, get to do that with the other set. So you kind of just loosely put it over to just make sure that it was going to work out prior yeah. to filming. Yes, remember you have to sew it inside out. Inside out mm -hmm. and a whole piece, not cut, which I did with the other, the first Why thing. did you do the whole piece method for this? Because it's going to be like, you have to sew the two ends like square. Okay. So now I open it up. I didn't cut it like the first one. So it's a whole piece. There you go, here. Okay. The reason, because this part here, this, this part that I'm sewing will be underneath the center. Okay. And the bottom part of the cushion. Yeah. And the two corners will form like an ear so that you have a square like a bag. Grandma is left-handed, just an <laughs> FYI. <laughs> that, that's why it's a problem. <laughs> Grandma's in her natural habitat. <laughs> Once in a while. All right.
right, and there she goes with the roundabout. <laughs> okay, now we'll start and make the tops. Close the top. And now double stitch. Always make sure your arm is up. If not, your thread will get out. Creating a corner. Yes, to give the square. So this is how far you went with the first set of cushions, right? Yeah. You just kind of mapped it out on how you were going to make your corners. Okay. Then the other one. Make sure you press it real good so that you have a kind of a triangle. Okay. okay. So you're matching it now so that it's mm -hmm. the same. Right. Comparing corners. Mm -hmm. Now that you got the corners, yes. now you're going to make it permanent. Right. So why didn't you double stitch at the end? Because you don't need to because the original it's, it's going to be inside and it's not going to be where it can get undone. I'm not cutting off the ear. I'm leaving the ears on. Okay. See, here's your square. Beautiful. Yeah, there. As well as. There you go. Cool. Here we are. One of my favorite parts. Goodbye, old material. It has to be kind of tight fitting. Right. Because if not, it doesn't look right. It's going to be loose and ugly. So this is the center lines that she created here with the corner here and then also another center line here as well. It's going to be at the bottom so you're not going to see this. Uh, and we are done. What do you guys think about the new look of my vintage wicker chair set? I am really amazed with the way how it came out. It is so professionally done. I want to give a big shout out and a big hug and kiss to my grandma for doing an amazing job with this project i could have not done it without her i do not know how to sew with the sewing machine and maybe one of these days i'll go ahead and have her teach me um you know basics of 101 on sewing because i do love to sew if you guys watch my channel um, i also do a lot of belly dancing projects as well so i'm gonna go ahead and do a little flip through so you can go ahead and see up close on how we did the cushion so i have the top cushion here as you can see my grandma did an amazing job here with the corners i really loved how that turned out the top part is two pieces here sewn together and then it goes all the way around and then when you take a look at the bottom and she just kind of secured it with safety pins so that it's easier for me to take the cushions on and off when i want to wash it probably maybe four times a year i'm hoping less than that uh, because I do not want to get this dirty, but it is outdoor on my patio. Uh, but she went ahead to do this. She wanted to go ahead and do this method instead of doing the tying method because she that was a lot of work for her. So we ended up doing this method, and I don't care. Whatever way that was easy for her to do the job, as long as it was covered, I didn't care the closure part. This is facing on the bottom of the cushion here, and it looks really nice. So it's perfect the way how it turned out as you can see the floral and the leaf print and then let's go ahead and share what the bottom cushion looks like this is the bottom cushion so as you can see again with the floral print from top to bottom and the velcro and closure here on the bottom which is just wrapped like a present on the bottom again my grandma wanted to do the velcro method instead of the tying method because it was easy for her I don't mind as long as it is facing on the bottom it doesn't show anything so this is what the cushion this is what the cushion looks like here 
facing the front and it is absolutely beautiful my grandma did beautiful corners here and this is the new look of my patio chairs I'm gonna wrap up the video here i hope this little diy hanging out with my grandma inspired you to go out thrift and do diy projects yourself to make things fit your style and your aesthetic i love doing those type of things for my patio i'll do a separate video talking about all of the vintage and diy pieces in my space you can find more on my blog at iladjulian.blogspot.com big shout out again to my grandma for doing this diy project with me before she goes back home to Hawaii and we also redid my patio so stay tuned for an updated patio tour and I'll see you guys on the next one. Aloha! Bye!